Welcome to the Content Supply Show. This is a show where we bring together entrepreneurs and experts all across the internet, especially those who are bringing tons of value to the world from behind their computer to front of stage. We break down their creative ideas, strategies, and stories that guided them along the journey of entrepreneurship so that we can all learn and be inspired together. So on this podcast today, we have Jesse Valle of Valle Media. And so she is a digital marketer and sales funnel strategist. And she really helps fill the gap in between those who are super overwhelmed with trying to get their funnel or their product launched into the launch phase. And so she fills that gap in between to help with strategy development. So we had a discussion around what she offers at her media company, how she provides value. And it's just a really interesting discussions that I'm super excited to share with you. So before we get into the interview, let's chat content supply. Content supply is a creative content as a service business where online brands and entrepreneurs can subscribe to a monthly supply of custom content to grow their business. So content like video, podcast, image, and blogs. This content is custom built to fit into three phases of your marketing experience. So one, free content on social media, two, paid ads, and three, content used for paid programs, memberships, or funnels. We're all limited on time and resources to produce all the content we want and need to support our customer's journey from point A to point Z. Content supply helps supply the filling of that gap. It's like the PB&J between your bread of your product or service and the bread of your funnel or your conversion tool. Go on over to contentsupply.com to learn more. So now let's get into the interview. Well, Jesse, tell me more about yourself. Where are you from? And, um, you know, what do you do? What do you like to do? Well, I feel like, okay, so I live in Wichita, Kansas. So I'm like the center of the country. And I feel like that's a perfect place right here in the central time zone because I'm able to work with people on the East Coast and the West Coast and it never, the time change never really affects me so much. So you are like, man, it's so bright and early in the morning. And I'm over here like, it's, you know, mid morning and I'm, I've been awake several hours and I'm feeling good. <laughs> and uh, I feel like about me, I feel like about everybody, there's two points. There's before you were an entrepreneur and then after you become an entrepreneur. And I know that there, there are certain entrepreneurial personality types and people that are just like entrepreneurs by nature. And I will be the first to say that that's not me. And so when I hear people about entrepreneurs have this special thing about them, I feel like I stand out because that was never me. My journey was never about being an entrepreneur. It's something that kind of came later on. And so I mentioned to you before that I listened to uh, Matthew Tim's interview and his caught my eye because it said music teacher to entrepreneur and or digital marketer. And I was like, well, I'm going to be super boring. That's my story too. But then when I listened to it, I realized we actually have extremely different stories and we became entrepreneurs for different reasons. And we have way different backgrounds, even though on surface level, it may look very similar. Um, I uh, was previously a Spanish teacher. So also an elective teacher uh, like Matthew, you know, just being in that role of going to school to learn how to transfer information to other people and get them to understand. I actually went on and got my master's degree in educational technology. So that's where the tech portion comes in. So not only was I able to teach, but I was able to find ways to teach people in a non face to face situation. So of course I was able to incorporate more technology into my physical classroom back in the day, but I was also learning how to get people to learn when we're not face to face and I'm not physically pointing at things or you can see my, all my crazy gestures and, and how to communicate with, with different learning styles too. Cause everybody learns differently in an online fashion. So I feel like my background 
really helped me when it was time to become an entrepreneur in digital marketing and, and doing the tech pieces is where I really shine. I love that you shared that. I had no idea that you were a Spanish teacher turned techie, really, right? Mm -hmm. and so you can totally marry the two in the sense that you're an educator. You know how to present information in an effective way. What, what uh, was it, high school that you taught Spanish? It was actually middle school. Middle school, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you babysat? Like no. <laughs> well, I was teaching those, yeah. those beginners. Like, uh -huh. So not only was I incorporating technology into my classroom, but I was taking kids who knew almost nothing or you know how – different kids come from different backgrounds. Right. Some had access to technology, some did not. And so for me to take them, even, even if they had access, it's all right here on your phone, right? It's your thumbs. So to teach them to use a computer and learn programs like Photoshop and just Google, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google, you know, all of that was fun to me. And I was one of the teachers in the building that did that more. So other teachers began to see me as an authority of bringing different types of tech into the classroom. I was always experimenting with the latest apps and different things for the classroom. And uh, the kids really en enjoyed to learn in a style that was more modern to mm -hmm. their world. Yeah, totally. So with that then, um, and doing Spanish, was Spanish teaching something you always wanted to do? Or in leaving that world, mm -hmm. was it difficult for you? Um, it was a little difficult at first because obviously it's a huge change. Like obviously something happened in my life. Yeah. And, and it was, I think you can relate. It was the best thing in the world. I became a mother. Mm. And all of a sudden, everything I had ever thought for myself was out the window. I didn't want to drop her off with someone all day so I could go, you know, foster other kids, even though that was a great fulfilling thing in my life. I wanted to be there for my own daughter as well and find a way to help people and educate people in the world while still being at home and, and helping my daughter too. So I made the decision to leave teaching to stay at home. And it was very similar to a lot of people. Like it was try to just get a little bit of money on the side, like a little side hustle, watch my daughter, you know, earn some income. And then I realized I actually really liked it. Right. So I was just absorbing everything, learning everything I could about doing things online. And then I learned, you know, digital marketing and started practicing all of that. And, and I grew and grew and grew until we decided my husband and I, that he could stay home and we would have a business together. So now I left teaching two years ago and we are both working from home. We are all together as a family and we're living a life we never would have imagined. And That's it's crazy great. how that kind of stuff just happens. How does your husband support? Uh, it, it's you guys all work under Valley. It's, is it Valley or is it Valle? It's actually Valle. Valle. There. Yeah. He's like, is Valle <laughs> street? In Spanish? Um, valle oh, no, that's, that's, no, that's calle. Calle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, valle means valley in Spanish. Okay, so I was right to say valley. So, okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, actually French origins, but yeah, my, my husband's family is from Mexico, and so we, okay. you know, we have that background. And um, but, but yeah, we uh, work together under Valle Media, and that's one of the reasons I rebranded from Jesse Valle to Valle Media is because – that would allow my husband and I to work under the same umbrella together as a family business. Um, well, and, and what does he do uh, with the business? Well, together we kind of complement each other. I'm much more, you know, techie and organized in the nitty gritty. And he's more of the personal person and relationships. And he, he's good about going and, you know, talking to clients and especially like local clients, he's really good at making those connections with other people. So he's kind of the people person and not that I'm not, I mean, as an educator, I connect with people, but um, I'm also that behind the scenes nitty gritty person. Totally. That's so cool. I, I love hearing this story because yes, I can totally relate. You know, I've got my uh, boy just 
turned one like a month ago. How, how old is your she's uh, two daughter? Okay, yeah. she's two, yeah. two and a half. And so I can totally relate. Although, like, I I still have a day job mm -hmm. uh, now, but uh, like the desire to be around your family more grows even more. And so I totally yeah. agree. And I know that that's not for everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. there are plenty of people out there that um, thrive in a different, maybe corporate setting or being able to extract themselves and work in a separate location. Like working from home is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. and that's why I don't go around saying, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Because the truth is, is that you actually do have to have an organizational quality to you to make sure to keep yourself like keep because there's a lot behind the scenes in any business no matter what it is that a lot of people don't think about and and so I that's why I don't always go around saying <laughs> you know I feel truly that anybody can be an entrepreneur if they wanted to but the truth is is that not everybody wants to do that behind the scenes stuff well, and you had mentioned that too you never really planned to be an entrepreneur it just kind of your path led that way so uh, how did you like, how did you adjust to that kind of, you know, it's a personality switch maybe, or maybe it's just like a, a mindset switch. Yeah, it, it was definitely a mindset switch of going for it. Like, and I feel like to kind of turn the tables on you for a minute, yeah. I feel like you're at that point where you're going to have to make that decision and just take a leap of faith. At some point and I've right. done that a couple times first to quit teaching I had to think to myself will I make enough money to supplement my income my previous income um, even if you took away the cost of daycare from what I was making is it gonna be enough can I hit that goal and I actually uh, purchased um, John Lee Dumas of EO fire his freedom journal mm -hmm. and so it was very specific in helping me set that goal because I was lucky as a teacher, I still got paid over the summer. And so I knew I had through the summer to build my business up to where it needed to be by the time I stopped receiving a paycheck. And so I, I did that and I had those daily goals beginning in night, what worked, what didn't, what could I do differently? What am I going to do? What steps am I going to take to reach my goal today? And, and just having that accountability in myself helped me reach just get that over that beginning hurdle for sure. That's um, cool. So it was that mindset shift of I'm going to do this. Like if I'm making this decision, I'm going all in. I'm not, maybe I'll try it. No, I had to go all in. And it was kind of the same thing again when we decided my husband was going to stay home um, was we had to just, are we going to go for it? And if we are, we have to dedicate ourselves to it and make that mindset switch. Yeah, I, I mean, I can totally relate. It's, you know, it's interesting too to, to turn the tables briefly on it, you know, for me is, uh, you know, graduating college, um, I don't know, it's been three, four years ago now. Um, the, it was a massive switch to leave that lifestyle and to jump into a career. And we took that leap, right? It's that leap of faith to come down to California uh, employment worked out very quickly. And so it, it did literally pay off to make that decision. Um, and then just kind of, I think when you take the reins of what you want out of your career, but also like over all your life, you know, and, and how you want to spend your time financially, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a matter of decision where the corporate or like, you know, the day job aspect totally works and it's great security for many people and then there's those who you know want to pursue the entrepreneurial lifestyle you know right which can be very enticing but yet it's you know it's not it's not for everyone no it's, totally it's not it's not and um like and i've tried different things like there are some people that travel the world and work mm -hmm. and i realized quickly i am not that person <laughs> like i'm a very scheduled out person. So even though I work from home, um, my husband and I have a routine and a system that we stick to that sometimes we're able to adjust to it when we want to. Like, you know, today's Friday. We want to get out of the house and go do something. We're going to. Or the other day, um, 
uh, we've all been sick in the house. It's winter, right? So uh, we were all going to like just conk out and take a nap in the middle of the afternoon. And we did. And nobody cared because we have that flexibility as entrepreneurs that we don't necessarily, the only people we're reporting to at the end of the day is ourselves. And now that I see that, I never want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Having somebody, I mean, that was one of the big things too, was I was tired of asking permission to take my daughter to the doctor. Or there was a time where she got really sick as an infant and I had to jet out of teaching in the middle of the day. Like that's hard to get a substitute, to get people to cover your classes. I was tired of having to ask to do that. Like my daughter's number one priority and if I need to leave, I need to leave. And it sucked to know that if my principal sat there and said, no, you can't go, what was I gonna do? And I didn't want to be put in that situation anymore. She never did. She was very awesome and understanding. And, um, but it, let me, it made me think, like, what if it became too much? What if she said no? What was I going to do? And just making that mindset shift of this is what I want, so I'm going to go for it. And actually figuring out what it was I wanted. I never really sat down and, and realized I could create any life that I chose. And that's what I think is awesome about being here today. Especially in the beginning, you try different things to see what fits. And um, you eventually are kind of pushed into where you belong. And then it's so nice to be able to wake up every morning knowing I chose to be where I am. I'm choosing to wake up at five in the morning to work because that's what I want to do. It's different when it's what I choose versus what someone's telling me to do. Yeah. I completely agree. I love what you just said. That was so cool. <laughs> it's, I mean, I feel like that's powerful for many people who are pursuing this path with yeah. their career. Um, and so uh, let's talk a little bit too about Create Your Laptop Life because I know that you're heavily involved in, in that world as well. Um, totally, how did yes. you get connected with Julie? You know, what, just give me like a quick, I guess, introduction to how yeah. all this happened. Well, one of the things that I wanted to start doing for myself before I became an entrepreneur was I was really thinking about starting a blog. Um, I was, I told you I was helping teachers with technology in my building, but I thought if they appreciated my help, maybe others would too. So I thought I would start this blog to teach teachers how to incorporate more technology into their classroom. And I found Julie because she was fabulous blogging back in the day. And I started following her. And then it was right about the time that she was like, hey, if you've ever been interested in being a virtual assistant, join my Facebook group with my partner. And then I joined. And I realized all this stuff. And they're like, hey, we're running Create Your Laptop Life. It's going to literally start your business. You know, back then it was a course. It wasn't what it is today. It was, a, you know, it was a course back then. Today it's more of a membership. And so I made that leap of faith of I'm investing money into this. I'm going to make it happen. <clears throat> and then I learned the skills and I did some great things. And then I'm just like, I couldn't get any, you know, solid recurring clients. And I was just like, ah, it's, and I was very vulnerable one day in, in our private Facebook group. And I was like, if somebody would just give me a chance, I would do amazing things for them. And I feel silly about it now. Like, oh man, I feel silly for being vulnerable. But a day later, Julie messaged me, hey, do you have time to do a quick tech job? And I was like, absolutely. And I did it quickly, efficiently. And she's like, oh, you're done? How about this? Oh, you're done? How about this? Can you do this? What about this? And before I knew it, I was on retainer. And then I was on a larger retainer. And then I was on a larger retainer to where she and Create Your Laptop Life and all of her other programs um, are, that they're my, they're, well, now are, because of my husband, it, they're our, large, our largest client to the, to this day. And so, um, Julie, I, I feel sometimes like I'm a Julie parrot because I learned everything from her. And I've found that most entrepreneurs are that way. They have some sort of mentor that they learn most of their stuff from and they look up to. And so for me, it's definitely her. And one of the things she once gave a talk about was finding that one person that changes your business. Because back in the day, she found uh, an influencer that was a great source of referrals and 
getting her off the ground. And I feel like she's kind of doing that to, to you as well. She's putting your name out there that, you know, you make great uh, content and, and you really put out a quality product. And, and, and so for me, it was her as well. She was that one client that changed my life. Not because, I mean, she did refer me to, to a few other clients as well along the way, but just because she herself has helped my entrepreneur journey because she took me under her wing to grow me as well. Perfect. I completely agree. Uh, and it's, it's finding that one person, it's finding that group of people. Yeah. And, and I think, I think there's that, there's that evolution of, um, I think the internet social media has provided access to people and resources that we've never seen before, you know, with the products that, you know, you and Julie and others support, like the digital gangsta, great mm-hmm. off of life. Every time I say the digital gangsta, it makes me smile. <laughs> you know, it's I know. Like I'm the whitest person, too. you know, trying to say that. I know. Me too. Um, and then, so, okay, let's, uh, let's kind of wrap this up in a little package then. Okay. Um, with all these things, how do you define success for yourself? To me, success is waking up each day and living the life I've chosen to live. So for other people, obviously they have different goals and different aspirations and qualities that they want in their life. And so success looks different to everybody. So for me, it is being able to wake up, choose to work as it fits into my day, spend time with my family more than I would have, you know, having a day job, not having to leave and commute somewhere, just being able to work from home. And, and that's why I feel today that I'm successful because I'm living the life I want to live. Nice. I like that a lot. So, um, yeah, I mean, to kind of wrap this up, because I do have another, I have a 730 call. Mm-hmm. So I would love to talk to you much, much more. And like I said, I will need your help much, much more. <laughs> and so um, I'll make sure to schedule a lot more things. Um, and that way, I mean, you can learn more about me, but I can also learn more about you in that process too, because I'm super interested to learn more beyond this. Um, so then uh, where can people learn more about you and what is it that you provide? You kind of gave context to that, but what is it that you can offer with your services um, with the business? Yeah, so uh, you can find us at viamedia.com where you'll learn you know, tech tutorials and tips on helping your business run smoother uh, for entrepreneurs and kind of learning how to optimize. Like we know how to use tools, but how can we actually use them to benefit us to the fullest? And also you can find a free five day crash course on ClickFunnels, one of the gross softwares for building sales funnels. And the services we provide right now, we're doing consulting and coaching. So if you need help building out a marketing plan, sales funnels, if you need coaching to get it done, tech coaching on certain software pieces, that's kind of what we're doing right now. Great. Well, and it's somewhere where I know I will need your services, you know, as a business. So I feel like so many people can tap into what you guys provide because, and I saw on your site too, there's email marketing, there's tech help, there's automation help. There's, oh yeah. Like you said, there's I'm really getting into way. automations lately. It's oh, like, man. My, I'm, my I'm, so, I'm so manual with everything. I feel like that. I'm like, uh, yeah, there's so many automations I need to get into. Yeah. Yeah. That's really my candy right now is automations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, I mean, I'm sure people love, um, you know, getting that help too. Yeah. Well, Jesse, it's been super nice to talk to you. Seriously. I, I'm glad we finally got to chat. In the yeah, you too. Me too. Uh, thank you All for right. doing this. And, yeah, uh, yeah, anytime. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Talk to you soon. We'll talk to you later. All right. See you, Jesse. Bye. Bye. So that about wraps it up for the show today. Thank you so much for listening. The fact that you're able to drop into this conversation, hopefully be inspired through the stories and ideas shared here is pretty awesome. So I'm a huge fan of relationships and getting to know more people. So if you have thoughts about the show, want to leave a review even, have questions about content supply, or just want to connect anyway, you can find me across the socials at Dallin Need. And of course, 
go on over to contentsupply.com and check it out. Thanks again. I'm so glad you're here and I can't wait to share more here at Content Supply. See ya.